What's going on guys? I'm gonna show you how I focus when I'm alone. I literally just take this box, I put it here, so pretending to be me, and then I come over here, and I focus on the box. All right, so it's focused, and then I throw it onto manual focus. What's going on guys? It's Jay here, back at it again with another video. Um, today I wanted to talk to you guys about beginner cameras and what's the best out there right now Sometimes people would DM me on Instagram asking me what's a good recommendation for a beginner camera I know a lot of people have already covered this topic, but I wanted to give my point of view as well All right, so I think there's three reasons of what makes up a good beginner camera number one is the value Is it cheap? Is it going to give you good quality photos? For a good price number two is it easy to use when you first start you want a camera that is not intimidating and is easy to learn on number three and I think this is the most important is that you want a camera that you can grow into so it's gonna have a lot of functionalities that you don't know yet and you don't have experience yet but as you progress and as you develop your skills um, it's gonna be there right next to you for every step so basically you want that camera to last you a long time all right so the camera that i think is the best beginner camera out there right now is the sony a6000 so let's look at some specs right now i'm on bnh um it's going for 650 dollars with a 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens that's in us dollars by the way this camera has a 24 megapixel sensor, 3 inch tilting display, full 1080p at 60 frames per second recording, Wi-Fi and NFC. I know I'm just reading these right now, but I can't I can't memorize these, okay? So it has 179 phase detect autofocus point. It has 11 frames per second shooting. That's crazy for a beginner camera. What that means is that you can get 11 pictures in one second. And if you have a good SD card, you can shoot continuously for like 50 to 100 pictures non-stop and get like every single movement say you're shooting sports or you're shooting a fast moving object like cars you can get so many shots in like five seconds of course you're gonna need a good sd card so i'll link some good ones down below in the description next is the iso performance it has 25,600 iso that's not bad for a beginner camera for low light that's decent like obviously you're not gonna go that high for iso because you're gonna get a very noisy shot but i would say you can go around 1000 1600 iso and get an okay shot so that's not bad and also it comes with a 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens I highly recommend getting the kit lens because it allows you to capture wide shots as well as narrow shots and as a beginner you're going to want to experiment with as much as possible those are the reasons why that this is a camera that is a good bang for your buck number two we're going to be talking to you guys about why it's so easy to use so the sony a6000 has an electronic viewfinder so what that means is that you're going to be able to see exactly what the camera sees and you get to see what the picture is going to look like before you even capture it. So if you have an underexposed picture, you can make proper adjustments right away. And that's really helpful for beginners to learn on because they can see that the mistakes that they're making and it's gonna help them learn manual controls faster. Another thing that I love about this camera is that it has lightning fast autofocus. Compared to its competitors, it blows them out of the water. Back like two or three years ago, it was like one of the fastest autofocusing cameras out there and that says a lot and I think it can still hold its own in 2018. So lastly and number three, it's a camera that will last you a long time. It has 24 megapixels, 25,600 ISO, it's really fast autofocus, it can record 1080p at 60 frames per second, like what else can you want for $600, right? It's a really good camera for its price. And I think as you progress as a photographer, I think you can still keep this camera as a backup, as like a second body if you decide to upgrade to say a full frame camera like the a7 II or the a7 III. Another thing I want to mention is that back when this camera came out, there weren't a lot of lens options that Sony came out with. So now it's 2018, we have a lot of options now and there's also Sigma and Tokina, all these third party lens makers 
and I think that Sony makes some of the best and sharpest lenses out there so this camera is definitely future proof. If you do decide to upgrade to a full frame, the Sony A7 line is absolutely amazing and you can definitely use those Sony lenses that you bought for the A6000 for the A7 line. So with the E-mount on the Sony, you can adapt a lot of different lenses such as Canon and a lot of other legacy lenses so that will be fun to play with as well. Overall, I think this is a versatile camera for beginners. You can capture amazing video and splendid photography. Alright guys, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll be sure to answer them. I'm trying to hit 200 subscribers right now, so please share this video if you have anybody looking to get into photography. Um, leave a like and subscribe. Peace.